how you can upgrade an ordinary Leopold bench and make it into an elegant Leopold bench. First off, I enclose all the fastener holes that are in the legs, the backrest, and the seat with black walnut dowels. Also cut a notch in the leg for the backrest support. And I also pour an epoxy foot on each of the legs to prevent wood rot. In this particular bench, which I made back in 2019, and you can see that as weather very well, I made this particular bench for my neighborhood. And I routed out the name of our neighborhood and the backrest. I've made several of these over the past few years for charity and auction events. And I've been told that they sell for several hundred dollars. So if you want to make one for yourself or for a charity, this plan is for you. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I make these elegant Leopold benches. You'll need three different sizes of boards to make your Leopold bench. <clears throat> the first size is the two by eight by 10 and that'll be for your leg supports. And then your seat would be a two by 10 by eight and your back support would be a two by six by eight. Uh, the legs come in pretty standardized sizes that you are supposed to make your cuts. But for your seat and back support, that can vary however long you wanna make your bench. And today's bench, I'll be making about a 48 inch long bench. So my seat will be 45 inches and my back support will be about 48 inches. And like I said about the legs, <clears throat> you need to make a series of cuts here. Uh, at all at a 30 degree angle, you need to make two 33 inch cuts and two 18 inch cuts. Okay, I have my four pieces of boards cut. I sanded them, rounded off the corner, removed any scratches and blemishes. I also took a little extra time sanding the top end grain here because this will be the top of the board and this end grain here will, will be exposed. This will be the legs part of the, of the um, bench. And I am gonna be putting an epoxy foot here uh, on each bottom of the piece to give it added protection from the ground. Also notice here that I have a bad uh, knot that I would not want to have to put down here on, on the bottom of the board uh, because it is compromised enough that it may uh, affect the integrity of the leg. That's why I put it up here on top. And uh, that's okay because when I do flip these boards, this, uh, this my hair will, will not be exposed uh, to, to the outside of the bench. You notice here that I also put the boards in uh, like a mirror, Im mirror image of each other. The reason I do that because when I flip these boards, uh, it'll be a lot easier to do them at about the same time and that way you'll know that you're doing it correctly. So the idea here is you have to get these boards exactly on top of the other board where there's a uh, with the bottom part here is exactly even with each other and then once you do once you establish that you can come back and draw a line right across here on each of the boards here you can have a line right across here so once you establish that line there on your board all you have to do is just flip this over like this and attach the top of that board there right to where the uh, that line is and do that on both sides and that way you'll know that each one of these boards here will be exactly flush to the ground with each other and you double check that with uh, using a, a long straight edge here at a, a level you can see here that that side is perfectly flat to the ground, and this side over here is perfectly flat to the ground. So I'm gonna attach these uh, boards here with uh, with these two and a half inch deck screws. I'll follow that by coming up through the other end here and attach them with three of these carriage holes. So let me go ahead and get the uh, holes drilled here to, to uh, put the screws in and uh, and then we can carry on from there. Okay, now I'll drill some 3 8 inch pilot holes into the wood here. I marked it here so 
Uh, I'll know if I put the screws in right here, then they won't be interfering with the carriage bolts when I attach the, the boards with the carriage with the carriage bolts. So I drill three eight inch pilot holes here, and then plug up the holes with this uh, three eight inch dowel. It's a uh, black walnut. So um, I'll drill. A three eighths inch pilot holes in each one of these holes here. I measured here about two inches up, two and a quarter inches up, and two inches over this way, three inches this way. So I'm positioning these screws here so they won't be interfering with the uh, carriage bolts when I attach the boards together with those bolts. So, and then I fill the holes in with this three inch black walnut dowel. Be able to plug those holes, the screw holes up there, so so I'll hide the. Uh, holes. Let's make sure the boards are still aligned perfectly. And Well now, make a little relief cut here. I'm not exactly sure what you would call this. I'll just cut this out and I'll add a, um, be able to hold my back support board in place. So I have a little sample here on my two by six and I outline the area that I want to have cut. And I'm gonna have it come all the way up to the, to the top corner right here. So this part of the, uh, the uh, leg will be uh, removed. And I also made a little jig here so I can have my jigsaw ride right along the edge here because I don't really trust myself in cutting that straight line there and I really think it's important to have a straight line here. So we'll see how this works out and uh, well uh, then I can make this other cut right here and then we'll see how that uh, show you how that support board will be fitting in there. Now I want to be able to uh, drill some holes here to place my bolts that will go through and connect my short leg to my long leg. Uh, so I outlined the, uh, where the uh, short leg runs underneath the uh, long leg so I'll know where to position the, these holes here. And now remember I have a couple of screws here attaching the short board to the long board so I don't want these bolts to interfere with those screws. So with this outline here, I was able to draw up a little uh, triangle here and then was able to just eyeball it here and put like equal distance between the two lines here. And then with the punch hole, I was able to go through and punch the holes here. So now I can go over to the uh, drill press and drill some pilot holes for these bolts. <clears throat> and I'll be using the 7 8 cents, uh forcing her a bit to drill these holes about mm, maybe a half inch deep.
you don't have a partner to help you hold up the bench, that's okay because you can just use these uh, clamps at the base of uh, each of the legs and that'll hold it upright and keep it from falling over. <clears throat> so once you have the uh, legs stabilized, you can, all you have to do is just square up the seat to the uh, leg legs and then uh, attach the uh, screw the uh, seat. Cut the uh, board for the uh, backrest, <clears throat> and as it turns out, remember I used a two by ten here to make the seat and made it 45 inches. So on that eight foot board, that left me 51 inches. So I decided just go ahead and use the remainder of that uh, uh, board, <clears throat> the two by ten board, to make my backrest. So I ripped this down to uh, the six inches. And uh, so it saved me from having to use that two by six. So if you want to use this dimension here, 45 inches on your seat and 48 inches on your backrest, and it allows you to just use that one board if you're able to rip it. Also keep in mind that with this uh, nice tight corner here for where, you, where your backrest rests, uh, you want to, even if you do use a two by six, you want to just cut that edge off here of one end because uh, these boards come rounded. You use a rounded board right here. It won't be that tight of a fit right there. So go ahead and just take the edge off that board then, on, then you'll have a nice fit here in your little slot for your uh, backrest. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the uh, backrest here. And then I think the only thing that's left to do there is other than staining the uh, deck, uh, the, uh, staining the, uh, the uh, the bench is to put the epoxy feet on the bottom of the legs. About to pour the epoxy feet now, and I used the planter's tape here to make a reservoir, and I used uh, multiple layers of the, the planter uh, um, painter's tape because uh, you just don't want any of this epoxy to leak out. And you really have to get a really nice tight fit around the edges and sometimes i just use a, um, a roller on it like that and really get a nice contact between the tape and the and the uh, bench <clears throat> because uh, you don't want any of this epoxy to start leaking out yeah and uh so first things you need to do is uh, after you apply your tape is make sure that your bench is level and once you do that and uh, you can uh, start any epoxy. And the epoxy I use is System 3 T88. I really like the T88 because it is waterproof and it, and it dries in about 12 hours. And it creates a really hard surface. So uh, once, this, once this hardens, then it really adds a lot of protection to the bottom of your, uh, your bench, not only from the ground and, and moisture, but also if you have a hard surface and it keeps the, uh, the leg from being worn down by either brick or concrete or whatever kind of surface, surface or tree or wood. But over time, the UV light will really darken it up nice and nice and brown. And so that amber color with the brown stain will blend in really nice together. Uh, so when I pour the epoxy, I usually just pour one ounce at a time or that's about, three, about 30 milliliters. And then pour the 30 milliliters on there and then let it dry, and that'll give you a, almost a quarter inch thickness of a uh, of epoxy on there. But if you want more, I would let the first one ounce dry, <clears throat> and then come back and pour another ounce on there. And then uh, that way it won't be putting so much pressure on your tape and less chance of it. Here is the finished, elegant Leopold bench. What sets this bench apart from your regular Leopold benches is all the hidden joinery that was administered in building this bench. You can see here on the, the leg supports here, I've used the uh, one inch black walnut dowels to hide that joinery. Here on the backrest, same thing with the uh, uh, black walnut. And then on the seat, did the same thing. And underneath here, you can't really hide the uh, the hardware that's uh, underneath the bench, but that's pretty much well hidden. And uh, I just used your standard stainless steel uh, 
bolts and nuts and washers on that because it's all it's going to be protected from the weather anyway so you won't have any problem with the uh, uh, corrosion of that that hardware and you can see here with the uh, rest of the bench here it turns out really nice use the cabot stain on there natural australian timber oil and with this um, pressure treated wood it does start out being a little bit yellowish greenish color but over a short period of time within a year it'll be uh, dark and not really nice from the uv light so hope you enjoyed the uh, video on this and uh have any comments please leave them and if you like this uh project i have a few more on my website uh, that you're welcome to take a look at and see woodworker and uh give me a, a like and subscribe if you want to see some more videos so thanks for joining <music>